Crossroads Relief and Development involves drought proofing over 1,200 families in one of the worst hit famine areas of Africa, a region of northern Kenya known as Turkana. We led a work team of 13 Canadians there recently and over the last while we've been hearing from some of the members of that team. And today we're joined by Greg and Sharon Houghton. Welcome Greg and Sharon. Good morning. <laughs> now you are, are just coming back from Africa. In fact, you haven't been home to Kamloops yet. You're on your way through. Glad you stopped into the studio here to give us an update. But you stayed on uh, longer than the other team members. You, you were there for how long? Total of eight weeks. Eight weeks. Wow. So let's uh, just back up. We do want to hear all about, you know, what you did there and everything. But let's back up to uh, kind of the what inspired you to to want to spend eight weeks of your life taking vacations and whatever days you can get off of work uh, you know covering your own costs to get there and back uh, why Greg I wanted to do this 40 years ago <laughs> really when I went to school uh, university and failed there and moved on and finally the opportunity came up to, for me to to do what I really wanted to do go overseas in an agriculture project now you're, you're a municipal arborist yes. in Kamloops yes. and so you're working with uh, trees, trees all the time <laughs> and so uh, I'm just a person who loves to watch things grow I suppose. Yes, really wanted to see things grow. And so the project was really all-encompassing taking all the factors into account in order to to make this happen so so let's uh, let's go to Turkana yes. <laughs> and have a look at some of the uh, photos you brought back right. and you can kind of describe what we're seeing. This is actually the quarter acre gardens uh, delineated with the uh, vitivert grass showing uh, a walkway here but each of the quarter acres is where uh, the gardens will, demonstration gardens will be. Okay so the grass outlined the borders, borders. of these gardens. Yep. Okay. Well we had Arbor Day while we were there. This is Patrick Ayler, one of the engineers. He's under the shade. He's trying to get some shade from that little tree. The mango it? tree. <laughs> <laughs> we're having fun. These are the seed beds under the uh, shade um, shade guard, shade uh, cloth that uh, were, you can see all the little bags, they had mm -hmm. little um, seeds, everyone had a seed. Right. This is the uh, water uh, platform, a big tank is going to go up on top there to supply water by gravity into the gardens. Okay, so the, the pumps would get yeah. it up there and then they, they would supply, supply the, the yeah. gardens. Okay. Oh, this is the first bore hole at, at the uh, team center. This is where uh, all the water is coming from, from the solar pump. Uh, this is the community gardens, uh, excuse me, community uh, water um, supply. So that structure that we see in behind with a couple of uh, spigots coming out. That's right. That's where the community can come, come now. Come in and get water from. So, so the, uh, the solar powered water pumps are able to to pump enough water to for the whole community and, whole and for the gardens and the gardens yeah any uh, any stories that kind of jump out to your mind as to uh, you know during your time there one for me yeah was we went out the the drillers arrived to start drilling the wells out on the farms and we went down it was one of those days that rained yeah. <laughs> and we went down to see the drillers and we took down with us uh, one of the elders from the Loberot farm, Elder William LaRue. And uh, he's older, probably 90. Took him uh, down, so Patrick, Kerry, myself, and Paul, farm manager, went down to see the drillers. We got out and we said, Paul, I mean, uh, William, you stay in the truck. It's cold, <laughs> mm -hmm. maybe 22. It's cold for him. So he stayed. We went out, we talked to the farmer, to the drillers, then uh, came back to the truck. Paul talked to him in Swahili, and all of a sudden he uh, broke out into applause, you know, spontaneous applause, as if, yeah, this is good, this is really good. Spontaneous applause happened again. We were there about a week after that. The drillers had invited us and the community uh, to come and pray before they really started drilling. And uh, we finished praying, and the drillers broke out into spontaneous applause. It was just mm. like God saying, "Yeah, thank you, God. Yeah. This is this is 
Good. Wow. Water is is so scarce and so important to, to that community. Yes. Uh, Sharon, to talk about the kind of the cultural a aspect of going from you know, Canada to spending eight weeks in this impoverished area. Um, yeah, it was very different. It's very poor. Uh, lots of hunger, lots of kids. Um, it's very hot. Uh, it was, the, the kids were incredible. Um, the welcoming nature of the people. We would drive along because um, we were going back and forth and we'd have, we'd hear little voices, sometimes we didn't even see them, and we'd hear this, how are you? How are you? How are you? And every once in a while they would see that we were white and they would go, Muzingu, and, which means white people in Swahili. And they were surprised because we were in a vehicle that um, usually is driven by Benson, who is black. And so they were surprised when they were Muzungus driving it. Um, <laughs> and they would wave. We could wave mm -hmm. and smile at anybody, and they would wave mm -hmm. um, and greet us. And it was, it was just so open and, and loving, and they're just wonderful mm -hmm. people there. So after eight weeks, um, do you feel that somehow God has, uh, has changed you as a result of this experience? Um, just the people are really, really in my heart. Yeah. Um, they're very special people and it's um, some place that really, they really, they just need help with the gardens, they yeah. need help with the water and they were so appreciative yeah. um, of us being there and when we said goodbye they said greet, greet people in mm. where you go home, say hello from us. And, All right, um, and you're doing that right now yes. on we, the yes. street. And so, Greg, uh, if someone who is considering doing something to help you know, financially even this, this project, what, what would you, say? how would you encourage someone to do that? Get out the, get out the, get out the checkbook or, or come. Yeah. Actually, there's a need for more help there. So there's more opportunities. Oh, uh, definitely, yes. So you can connect with us at Crossroads uh, Relief and Development. You can go online, find out more about it. You can give they're online. You can call our, uh, our number, 1-800-265-3100. Say, I, I want to help out. And so thank you so much for doing what you can do. Thank you, uh, Greg and Sharon, for giving of yourselves so sacrificially. And God bless you as you go back home and get back into your regular routine. But I'm sure uh, Turkana will not be far from your heart. Nice. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us.